I fear not the dark itself, but what may lurk within it. Welcome to Lurk, bringing you creepy, strange, and bone-chilling stories with your hosts, Tim Harrison and Jamie Jackson. Lurkers, it's Jamie. And Tim. So, Jamie, 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 what are we talking about today? Uh, today we're going to talk about the Phoenix Lights. Like the baseball team? Is there a baseball team called the Phoenix Lights? No, it's... The Suns, isn't it? Yeah, it's a basketball team. Do you like how I knew that? So, what's the Phoenix Lights? So, uh, Phoenix Lights, I didn't really know a whole lot about this. This was a Tim special. <laughs> I didn't really know much about the Phoenix Lights. Angelina knew about the Phoenix Lights. Pointing me to the right direction. That's how I found all my stuff. Agent A That's for the dog. Right. Yes. She's my go-to for UFO alien stuff. She's a baller. Yes. She's a baller. I'm going to start out by saying that when I started reading information about this, I was like, this is a total BS thing. It's not true. And we're going to talk about it. And it's totally explainable. And okay. nothing weird about it whatsoever. Let's go then, Jamie. We're going to have a good conversation. That's how I started. All right. All right. Fair, 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 fair. That's not how I finished, but that's how I started. Oh, no. you, def- you Everyone starts that way. I'll be honest. That's I don't- how I started with it. Well, see, that's not always how I start because usually I I try to look at things open-mindedly, a little, the- bit, little bit skeptical, but I always have a little bit of a bias towards the paranormal. That's fair. Because I believe it. That's fair. So it's not like I go into it trying to disprove something or not thinking it's going to be paranormal because I don't believe in it. I believe in the paranormal, obviously, or I wouldn't be doing a paranormal podcast. So I have a little bit of a slant towards believing the story already when I start. I started reading this. I'm like, this is BS. All right, BS. That's not how I ended, but that's how I started. Okay. Okay. So in looking at this, we're going to go a little bit before when the actual what is referred to as the Phoenix Lights event happened, just because it's important to have a little bit of background with this. Okay. Um, 1995. So the Phoenix Lights happened, uh, I believe it was 90, It was 1997. So seven, yep. two years before, 1995, there's a doctor. Her name is um, Dr. Lynn Kitai. Wow. Yeah. I totally. Butchered it. He butchered it. I butchered it hard. Um, I only know because she was in a documentary and said her name. Sorry, Kitai. Yeah, it's not spelled anywhere close to how it's said. She was at her house. It kind of sits up above Phoenix. It's part of Phoenix, but she can see the sky, Phoenix skyline where mm-hmm. she is. And she witnessed three amber-colored orbs in a triangle formation hovering over an area she said was private desert. She said they were about three to six feet each, kind of oval-shaped, uniform color, no glare, had a total different appearance than the lights of the city. So, you know, she even mentioned when you look at the city lights, there is like a glare, you know, the lights are glare. She says there was nothing like that with these lights. Okay. She also commented that they kind of had a soothing or es- esmerizing. They had a soothing or mesmerizing effect, and it was everything it was kind of eerily silent. Okay. And then nothing was seen for two years. She didn't see anything for two years. So it just goes silent. After that eerie event, it goes... She, yeah. January 22nd, 1997. This is still not the event. We're still three months prior to the actual event. I'm officially one year and six days old at that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's things that happened, and I'm not even going to bother asking about it because I knew you weren't going to have any idea. Because there's something else I'm going to talk about before we talk about the event, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm sticking it in, but it's kind of important in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I swear to God. <laughs> If you say that's what she said, I will slap you in the face. January 22nd, 1997, Dr. Kitai saw three orbs on the horizon. They were amber in color again, flying in formation in front of South Mountain. And it was around 8 p.m. She said some of the orbs would disappear, but then reappear. And then six more orbs showed up. She took photo or video of this. She actually had the foresight to video this phenomena so she called the local air force base luke air force base and they kind of were like we don't have anything in the air they're very short with her if we don't have it's not ours we don't have anything in the air right now and she's like well i just i just want to know what i'm just curious what's going on and so they suggested call air traffic control at the airport that's in their airspace the area she was describing so she does finally get in touch with somebody at the airport 
And they said, yeah, there were three objects at 8 p.m. At 8.30, there were six more objects, and none of them showed up on the radar. So there were, and there were six points of light. They seemed to be attached to something because they were moving in tandem mm-hmm. together. I mean, those lights, if you watch the video, you, you can see like a rough outline. Yeah, she took a video. There's lots of video. There's lots of stuff out there on mm-hmm. this. So we're now at the main event. The actual Phoenix Lights. Here we go. March 13th, 1997. They started around 7.30 is what it said. It went on for several hours. All right. So March 13th, 97. Strange bright lights were seen over Nevada, Arizona, and part of Mexico. Actually, wasn't just Arizona. That's a massive area to cover. Huge area. It wasn't just one event. It was several events across Arizona, and they lasted several hours, like I said. Yeah, so this isn't a quick, like, bloop, bloop. No, it was not quick. Not by any means whatsoever. People saw what they described as a wide V-shaped formation of lights that were silent, and they were witnessed by commercial pilots, air traffic controllers, police, and thousands of others. So basically, the point in bringing up those, it was witnessed by people who were in the know. Yeah. They can, they are reputable people who have to maintain their reputation, who also are knowledgeable about aircraft and aircraft in that area. And that's my point in bringing up those specifics. Okay. So basically we're just going to discuss different accounts of the same basic event, more or less is is what we're talking. This was one event. This is not like a, it's a little different than the other stuff that we've talked about. Yeah. Well, this, and that's a great thing too, is that this is all shot on the same night. Mm -hmm. This is all shot at different viewpoints. But that just should tell you how massive. This was this a event. massive sighting. Yeah, this isn't something like where some people like, you know, they're they're on a small area and they take a picture of a very small shiny object. Like this is such a massive event that I believe like multiple multiple highly reputable people at that time actually didn't know what was going on either, and they saw. Oh it. yeah, yeah. They they were people who should know what was going on and and had no explanation. Yep. So, one witness said they saw three enormous lights floating incredibly slow towards him, and they appeared attached to something that was several football fields long over overhead. He could see the lights clearly, and he mentioned there was no filament wire. So, if you look at a light bulb, and this is... Some people aren't going to know what we're talking about, because light bulbs are now totally LED, different. Yep. They're LED and, and everything. Um, so, light bulbs had filament wire inside them, and he said... There was no filament wire at all. It looked like the light was swimming around in the orb, which is incredibly weird. Yes. In 97, that's not something... Still weird now. (laughs) It's still weird now, but it would have been even weirder back then. Correct. When we still had incandescent light bulbs. So a commercial pilot, uh, this person had 40 plus years of experience, also served as a military helicopter and fighter pilot, said that he saw the lights... He said the object had no navigation or anti-collision lights, and it was moving too slow to stay in the air if it was a conventional aircraft. This thing, that's one thing everybody does say, that it was moving incredibly slow. That was something they kept mentioning, how slow this thing moved. And that's something to definitely, I think, people need to understand. Again, this, again, was not... And I'm going to keep repeating this because it's crazy to think about it, though, because not a lot of people either A, know about this, or B, they think it's like, it was there for five seconds. Like, no, this was uh, over several hours. Yes. It, it moved very slow. And most importantly, it wasn't small. Like, it was massive. It was a mile wide. Yeah. It, it was a mile wide. So this, this same pilot, he said it was five lights that were in a V formation and that the lights were locked in position and moving in tandem. And he believed it was one aircraft and said the lights resembled can lights and had no harsh glare. So a can light is a recessed light, kind of. Some buildings will have a light recessed, like in the ceiling. That's what he's saying as far as can lights go. Yeah, it's a cylinder that it It shines through. Yeah. Yeah. He also said there was no harsh glare. So the lights that Dr. Kitai had seen previously, there was no harsh glare. She mentioned there was no glare which was different than like the Phoenix skyline. The lights all described were amber or they said like orange, which is amber, like a yellow orange. And they were uniformly round and equidistant from each other. Equal distant. Which means they are. Equal distant. Equidistant. Equal distant. The same distance. 
equally. Okay. There was a retired police officer who was one of the witnesses that had come forward, and he said he saw lights floating in the sky. There were five lights, and he actually said there were two trailing lights that looked like they were docking and undocking and hanging over the valley, which is similar to what Dr. Kitai had explained back in January. Um, she saw this, a similar type thing. Um, yeah. And Kitai and the police officers don't know each other. Uh-uh. No. Okay. no. Putting it out there. Yeah. Putting it out there. Another witness stated he watched a boomerang-shaped object glide over Granite Mountain and that the thing was at least a mile wide and there was no way it was from this planet. It was totally silent. It was as big as downtown Prescott, Arizona and completely blocked out the stars. Absolutely mammoth. Yeah. And that is one thing that some people just said they saw the lights in a like a V formation. Some people said they saw a boomerang-shaped craft, which... Still, v still a V-type yeah. formation. But some people actually said they saw the craft, for the most part, cells, and that it did block out the stars. So that there is something in between the lights. There is some object that the lights are attached to. Yeah, solid object that's going through. Right. Um, there were some hospice workers. They, they were outside. They saw a huge, dark, silent object above their heads, and they couldn't see the entire object because it was so large. So they could only see a portion of it. They couldn't see either end because it was too big. And then this was one account that I, I kind of liked. It was an 11-year-old boy, and he was leaving his Cub Scout meeting. And some people would be like, really? You know, like 11-year-old? 11-year-old boy's getting ready to join the Boy Scout troop. He's probably in 5th or 6th grade. Totally has the wherewithal to be able to describe something accurately and be an accurate eyewitness, speaking as a scout leader. Just saying. I, I was going to leave it alone. Just I saying. was going to leave it alone. No, just saying. Just a little bias here. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little. So this 11-year-old boy said he saw something that looked like a stealth bomber, which, again, is that yeah. same boomerang or V-shaped. And he said because it was triangle-shaped and it had three lights and was moving very, very slowly there for two to three minutes. And then the lights started went out one by one. Again, also like Dr. Kitai had described, she said the lights would disappear and then come like turn off and turn back on. Basically, there was an unidentified crewman from Luke Air Force Base that claimed two jets were actually scrambled during this and that one of the pilots stated that they had a visual on it. They've got gun camera film of it and they had no radar tape of it. It scared the hell out of them. Okay. And during all of this, there was a council member, city council member, former vice mayor, Francis Barwood. And she figures prominently in this because this was like talked about. So many people saw this and nobody knew what it was. She was approached by reporters before a council meeting and they're like, what is going on? What was this thing? What, you know, what's being done? Is anybody looking into it? So she goes into the meeting. She feels that her constituents obviously want answers. Correct. Nobody's trying to provide any. So she goes into the council. She questions what's being done to look into what happened the other night. And the mayor says, we don't have UFOs over Phoenix. She point out she didn't call it a UFO. That's not what she said. She just simply asked about the incident. Is anything being done to look into the incident the other night? Then later, somebody pulled her aside and told her she shouldn't have asked the question because it was something the council didn't want to deal with. Too bad, get over it. Yeah. She felt it was a matter of public safety, and it was an issue with airspace safety. The airport is right there. It was seen over the airport. You know, it was seen over the whole flipping city. So if there's a giant object in the sky a mile wide, and you've got a busy airport, and there's, I think there's two Air Force bases in the area, you you would want to know what's up there that could be getting in the way. Or or maybe... I gotta make sure I keep this family friendly. How about we don't give a fudge about the airport? How about why is it going over the city? Yeah, the entire city. Where? But I'm just saying, she was saying this, you know, trying to pull away from the whole UFO thing. She, yeah. She's just saying, obviously, there's a safety issue here. Yeah, something's happening. We don't know what, what was going on, and we have a busy airport, and it's not on radar. And if it's an object, it's obviously going to be a problem with incoming or outgoing air, you know, airplanes. Don't we want to know what the heck it was? She actually wrote a letter to Senator John McCain asking what was going on. And McCain basically sent a letter to the National Archives 
and then she got a copy. Basically, when you send a letter to the National Archives, they archive it. It's filed. It's not sent to them for any other reason other than to file it away. So all he was doing was placating her. She basically was ridiculed in the media. There were political cartoons about her. It must suck really worrying about other people's safety. Yeah, apparently there was a cartoon of, of her with a UFO flying in one ear and out the other. And all these other crazy political cartoons. If, if I'll put this out there. If you are a person that, A, has a media influence, right? And somebody who clearly in this situation... Now, there is some people that just say some crazy off-the-wall stuff. But this individual clearly had a, a wherewithal to worry about others, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay... I'm not calling it a UFO. I'm not calling it, what is it, unidentified aerial phenomenon, mm-hmm. UAF or whatever. UAP. UAP. We're not, we're not worried about none of that. How are you handling it? That's all I'm asking. Is how, hey, what yeah. just happened? How do you handle it? Right. And the fact that she didn't have to elaborate means that they knew what was going on. They knew what the press, they knew what was going to be said. Oh, it was in the papers yeah. at this point. Yeah. So for people to take, uh, take it upon themselves to ridicule her, to shame on you. Like, that's the best way to say that. Like, honestly, at that point in time, she's not out here saying, oh, they, they took me up and they probed me five different yeah, ways she's, for Sunday. She never, she, the words alien and UFO never were part of what she was asked. She's just like, hey, what, what about her What safety? the heck was going on? Yeah. I have other notes written down that she actually asked for an Air Force investigation. She also, and this was part of UFO Hunters. I don't even think that show's still on anymore. No. Did you hear about them? What, during that F? their episode about this no like or what, them in period general, them. no oh we gotta talk a lot about okay that. i used to watch the show a little bit back in the day but i was watching i watched a little bit of their episode about the phoenix lights which i think is episode it's season two episode six i believe which isn't written down i just remembered that so i like <sighs> how you picked up on the tim thing here i ain't gonna read it. i was gonna watch it <laughs> yeah That's the quickest way to do... Yes. They've already done a lot of research, so sometimes that's the quickest way. I did read actual newspaper accounts, however. I did pull up... Because that's the best way for me to get factual information. Well, I use factual loosely because it's the media, so... But it's the quickest way to pull up information at that specific time, accounts of what happened. Correct. And I, I only say question the factual nature of it because some of what I'm going to talk about here actually disproves some information that was in the newspaper type type of thing. So that's why I'm saying that. She was asked if she felt there was an organized cover-up and she said yes because, you know, it was like they immediately started attacking her about it. And all she was doing, people who, who put her into office had questions and wanted answers. And she was trying to do what a political figure is supposed to do and act on behalf of the people who put her in office. And that's all she did was say, what the heck was going on here the other night? Thousands of people saw this thing. What's going on? How dare she do the right thing? <laughs> I know. How dare she? I know. So at the same time, the governor at the time was Fife Symington. He had a press conference and then he had a press conference later. And he said, we have caught the culprit. Let me introduce you to the person behind this whole thing. And out comes one of his staff members in an alien costume. So I must say that. But now we're going to listen to what really happened with the governor. Because even though he had that press conference and basically made fun of everything, he actually witnessed what happened. He witnessed the, the lights himself. March 13th, 1997, this event called Lights Over Phoenix, what did you see? Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. And um, I, I'm not sure about the, the date. You've, you've got a better memory March for the 13th. dates than I do. Yeah. But there was no, like the Clinton day, no. No. <laughs> No, I was on a strict diet. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious now. That that it was a it was a U, unquestionably it was a UFO, which means unidentified flying object. Right. Doesn't nothing, mean we're being visited. Well, it's nothing like anything I've ever seen. And, and you're an Air Force guy. Yeah, yeah, and a pilot. Uh, got a lot of hours flying, so uh, it was pretty breathtaking. And um, and I'll never forget. I I snuck out to see it. 
um, you know, without DPS, um, which I, I'm not supposed to be driving my own car and that kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And so, uh, but I told Ann what I was doing. I was going to go up to Squaw Peak and see what everybody was, you know, clamoring about. And um, when I walked in the front door, she looked at me, and I was apparently just, normally I'm fair complected and pale anyway, right? And she said, oh my gosh, she said, she'd look like a ghost. What, what, what did you see? And I said, well, I don't know what I saw, but it's, it was really something, and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, wow. So Were you, did it frighten you? No, it, no I, I think I was kind of in awe, really, you know? How big? Bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky. Like an aircraft carrier in the yeah, sky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And it, and it was hard to define because of the light in terms of the size, but it, but it was absolutely silent and had sort of eerie embedded lights. And, you know, so that's what I saw. And I wasn't expecting to see anything because I was looking out over at Luke uh, right. to the west. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, these people in the park uh, Area on the just on the west side of 51, there were a bunch of people there. Everybody said, "Oh, look at that!" And we turned around, and this thing was coming from the northwest, traveling to the southeast. We now know, um, and it really hit me when, when we were watching the Diamondbacks in Game Seven, and the B1 flew over, mm -hmm. over the it wasn't, bomb. Yeah, it wasn't a B1 bomber. But that thing all of a sudden out of nowhere appears. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I said to somebody that night, I said, well, you know, when they do test these, mm -hmm. they test them in populated areas. They're new stuff. They mm -hmm. test it to see if people detect it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it was ours? Do you believe it was something from the U.S. government that they no. were kind of flying around? No, it wasn't even close to a B. It was much bigger than a B-1. A B-1 actually isn't that big. I mean, right. I mean if it's, it's at low altitude, it'll appear a big. But no, this, this was totally different. Something, though, that you think our own government may have been kind of running by a populated area to see what would happen? <laughs> well, they certainly, they certainly achieved uh, their goal of stirring the pot, if that's what they were doing. But I don't think, I don't think so. I, don't, I think this was technologically far advanced. I, also, I, I, use the, I use the analogy, can you imagine if you took uh, Christopher Columbus and put him in the cockpit of a Boeing 777? what his reaction would be. He, he wouldn't understand it. He would be convinced that this is something from another world, you know. Is that what and I think, I, I really believe, I believe that. I believe that. But I've always been open to that. You know, we're not alone in the universe. Oh, we're, I agree with we're you gonna find that. We're going to find that out one way or the other. Even Bill Clinton was talking about that the other day on the national news. I saw that. Yeah. I do believe that, that we're mm -hmm. not alone. I just don't mm -hmm. know that we've been visited. But well, you the, think maybe that night we were. I, I think so, yeah. There have been so many different sort of sightings and inexplicable phenomena that, you know, um, but, but the disparity um, in terms of technological progress would be so vast that we would be, I think, of sort of no consequence to whoever is visiting us because the technology to get here would be just beyond anything we could imagine. Did it hover? No, it was just going in a straight line. Slow pace. Yeah, slow pace, yeah. And then, you know, there were all Not the sightings. Flares. There were the sightings of the America West plane coming into Sky yeah. Harbor, said he could have landed on it. It was enormous. Yeah. Like an aircraft carrier in the sky, is that about as close yeah, I as think that's, I think that's a fair description, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Maybe it's our next generation we're working on. Who knows? Well, we'll find out it someday. This was a Fox 10 Phoenix interview from 2014. What a joke. I don't think he is. This is not the only interview that I... No, I mean, but he ridiculed in somebody. The he he did, but he says in another interview that I listened to, he specifically states that he regrets that, he, that that happened. At the time, there were thousands of people who saw this. So he was concerned that there would be panic and that he was trying to put a spin on it to keep it more light and jovial and not a holy crap E.T.'s coming and they're taking over the planet. I, you got to remember when Orson Welles did his radio show, neither one of us were alive then. I just know about this, just to put it out there. I'm not that old. That Orson Welles did the radio show War of the Worlds. Yes. People flipped the hell out. They because did. they thought it was real and that aliens were invading and attacking. And that was a fictional thing that was going on. This was an actual object that people saw flying over the city 
Nobody knows what the heck it is. People who should know what it is don't know what it is. And in his mind, he's trying to keep the people from flipping out. By ruining a person, though? He didn't ruin her. This was, I just brought it up in association with her. He didn't have anything to do with Barwood. He was totally separate. That was just, he had a news conference, because he's the governor. She's on the council, city council level. So they're totally separate from one another. It's just that he came out with one press conference and said kind of they were looking in, you know, like trying to answer questions about it. And then he had a later press conference that wasn't really announced. It was kind of a impromptu thing. And that's when he did the alien thing. It didn't have anything to do with her at all or her questions. Now, the mayor and the council of Phoenix ridiculed her and the local Phoenix papers and everything they ridiculed her but that didn't have anything to do with him they were separate it's just that he was make he was making light of what went on but witnessed it and even mentioned in there that apparently and it was an account that i didn't find but he mentions there was a pilot coming into the airport who said it was so big he could have landed on it i don't know if you caught that near the end and that's how he's describing it uh like an aircraft carrier in the sky Aircraft carriers are flipping huge. They're like floating cities. They're huge. I just wanted to include his He's a, ac- a butt cheek. That's all I got to say. He made a mistake in doing that press conference. I I wasn't sure. I kind of laughed. I kind of, like I said, I went into this thinking it was BS. Kind of chuckled at his press conference because I'm like, yeah, it's BS. Later in looking into things, I believe his reasoning behind doing that press conference is accurate. I don't think he meant to be malicious or anything. I think he was in, he was doing it for the right reasons, not the wrong ones. And I believe his accounts because he actually, this is just one interview that I listened to. He was at on several other things discussing and he actually brings up the news conference and the other ones but this was the better like i picked which one had the best descriptions this was the better interview to include there are other interviews and clips out there of him talking the fact that pilot said he could land on it yeah that's huge that's wild that's huge so there was a 911 operator who said that the 911 center was actually inundated with calls about the lights that night they all shared the same description. Most people weren't afraid. They, there wasn't really any fear or panic going on, which was a little surprising. Um, she said most of them were amazed and wanted just to know, wanted what is it? answers. Later in the media, it said that the, there were only a few calls to 911. She mentioned that she told her supervisor, that's not true. There, there were hundreds of calls. Like, they received hundreds of calls about this. But the it was downplayed in the media saying, oh, there were only a few calls. But that wasn't the case. They had tons of calls coming in describing the same thing. Thousands witnessed this event, and it's considered the largest sighting because of the number of witnesses and the length of the sighting. So this is considered one of the biggest UFO sightings ever at least in the U.S., but probably ever because of the number of people. And you may wonder why everybody might have been witnessing this, why there were so many people who witnessed this. And this is what you're not going to remember because you weren't even a year old, probably. At the time, the hale Comet was visible in the sky, and it's only visible about every 2,000 years, so you won't ever get to see it, sorry, unless you live to be 2,000 years old. Okay. Everybody was looking. You could see it with, you could just see it with the naked eye. You didn't need anything to be able to view the comet so anybody could go outside look up and see it i saw it. it's pretty cool that explains why so many people were outside looking up when this happened because everybody was outside looking up to see the comet also interesting and i'm gonna add this in here with this comet there was actually a call a cult called the heaven's gate yeah it had been around for a while under many different names this is the name it was at the end they believed that they were angels who had been sent to earth and now they were going to move to a higher level on the ethereal spaceship they were going to ascend yes to the ethereal spaceship and that spaceship was hiding in the tail of the hale comet so they committed mass suicide in california somewhere around march 19th 20th of 1997 well creepy huh Yep, because they believed there was a UFO in the comet that was coming to get him. A little creepy. Yeah, and then everybody sees this. I'm not saying that they were right in this giant spaceship because this spaceship was way bigger than that 
whatever was in the tail of that comet. Well, yeah. Well, you know, Blind Squirrel finds a nut. Yeah. Blind Squirrel yeah. finds a nut. Yeah. But that was going on. This, this comet thing, just trying to put it in perspective, it was a big deal. I, I mean, like, I remembered. And it was talked about because of this cult, you know, like I made jokes like, you know, Oh, I think I see the UFO. I mean, like, I don't remember the Phoenix lights, but I remember the comet and everybody, you, you went out there and you looked up at that comet every night because it was the coolest thing. And you were never going to see it again because it only comes around about every 2000 years. How many nights was it visible? I don't remember how long it was. I didn't look that up, but it was more than one night. I mean, like it was over a period of time. It was visible. That's crazy. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It just like circled the earth. I don't know what the or it comes around the earth and then it takes back off in space and eventually in 2000 years it'll come back around. Nice. Yeah. Actor Kurt Russell claimed to have seen the phenomena. He claimed to have been one of the pilots that reported it. I love me a Kurt Russell. I like Kurt Russell. He said that he remembered it because Goldie Hawn apparently is a huge UFO enthusiast. And she watches documentaries on, you you know, that sort of thing. So she was watching a UFO documentary and he came in the room and they were talking about the Phoenix Lights in this documentary. He is listening to, you know, to this and he said, wait a minute. I think I I saw that. He goes and he gets his logbook for, because he's a pilot, you know, he flies his own personal plane. And he gets his logbook and it didn't have the specific details but it did have that he flew into sky harbor airport in phoenix that night in question the day the same date that this happened and he said basically he he was taking his son to go see his girlfriend who lived in phoenix they were on approach and he saw six lights over the airport and they were absolutely uniform in a v shape and radioed to the tower you know that what's on your radar and the tower's like we don't have anything on radar and he says well this is what i'm seeing they like, well, do you want to report a UFO? And he goes, well, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's, I mean, I don't know what it is. So I guess it's, a, you know, UFO. He says, that's just, that's just what I'm seeing. So anyway, that's the gist. So in 2014, there was a Washington Post article that actually said Arizona has the highest number of UFO sightings per capita in the United States. Which does not surprise me. I would have thought it was maybe Washington or I don't know, Utah. <laughs> But I think Utah people don't talk that much. Yeah, they're pretty tight-lipped, I would imagine. But that I mentioned in the Skinwalker Ranch, the Four Corners region of the United States, that's Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. Those are the four I couldn't remember the four states. Those are the four states that all meet together. I would probably even say also California would, would, because just the dense population-wise, California and Florida might, I thought they might be up there, but also Arizona, a lot of retirees go there. Mm. So all you're doing is like this. (laughs) For those who couldn't see what Tim was doing, he was leaning back in his chair looking up. That's, (laughs) because they can't see you doing this. hey, Karen, you think we're going to be up there someday? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, Paul. (laughs) And UFO sightings are common in the Phoenix area. They're actually reported multiple times a year in Phoenix. Not uncommon. Anyway, during this event, the military was asked, because like I said, there are a couple of Air Force bases. Luke Air Force Base is the closest. Correct. The Montos. So the military was asked what, you know, what the heck is going on? And they repeatedly said that nothing was in the air that night. And then all of a sudden, they remember, oh, wait a minute. We had a National Guard unit from Maryland, of all places, visiting, and they were dropping flares. And they forgot to check with the visiting military groups to see what they were doing. I, at first, when I first heard the flare account, I was like, nope, that's what this is. This is, it's easily explained. This is flares. You know, this is so ridiculous that I'm even spending time researching this because it's, it's flares. And then I found the article in the newspaper about them saying repeatedly that nothing was there and then saying that they had forgotten to ask the visiting military groups what they were doing. And I'm sorry, but if you're on a military base and you're doing things, they know what you're doing. Yes, they do. It's not a secret. Nope. They know what's being run. They can't, they have to know what you're doing so that they know what they can and can't do in a certain area. So I'm sorry. So that explanation was ridiculous. Like after I started looking into it, it was like, oh, 
Anyway, there were quite a few witnesses who had a military background, and they all said flares did not explain what the majority of people saw. Some people did see something, and it could have been, if they had actually been dropping flares, what some people reported could have accounted for the flares, because they claimed they were dropping the flares within a certain time frame. The reports of sightings spanned outside of this time frame. So right there, discounted. Immediately. Immediately. Assuming they dropped flares. We're going to assume that they did. I don't think they did, but we're going to assume that. They, if these people with military backgrounds said flares did not explain what they saw because what they saw was moving across the horizon. It was moving horizontally with the earth and flares travel vertically towards the earth. They are traveling down from the sky. They're dropped out of a plane and they are traveling down. Pyrotechnic and film experts examined the photos and videos. There were tons of photos and videos of this event. If you search it, you can find it. Go look for it. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube's got it done. I think, honestly, you type Phoenix and to put L, it pops up. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. They pointed out that flares, the pyrotechnic guy said, flares have a distinct smoke trail. There is a smoke trail. You can see it. Mm -hmm. with a flare they travel independent of one another so they are not falling at the exact rate of speed and they are not equally distant from one another that totally discounted the phoenix lights were totally rock solid with each other traveling same exact speed same exact direction never one was not ahead of the other one or anything else they were all uniform no smoke trail at all none somebody also made the comment because stealth bomber was mentioned a couple times it was mentioned nothing we have is silent. He That's said true. a stealth uh, he said a stealth bomber is radar evasive, not sound evasive. So you hear it. You hear you do at some point hear it. There was no sound with this thing at all. And it's massive. It's massive and there was no sound. And it's moving slow. And so it's moving very slow. It's not like slow. it's breaking the this, this speed mm-hmm. of sound, you know what Right, I mean? right. Uh, the, the image expert that they had on this documentary, he was able, I don't know how to get into all the specifics. He, so this image expert was able to analyze the lights in the videos. So basically he explained that you can take the lights and I'm not going to go to the ins and outs. He turned it into a graph and different lights have different wavelengths and you can determine what type of light things are because they have a specific signature. The light measurement for the lights in the videos did not match any other lights. It's just the basic. He explained it in a much longer detailed explanation. We're not going there. (laughs) <laughs> and the, the the documentary was actually based on the book written by Dr. Kitai, who's the doctor we mentioned earlier on in the episode. It is free on Prime, Amazon Prime, for you to watch for free if you're a Prime member. Or you can get her book, and I'll put that in the show notes. It was interesting. The documentary wasn't the best, but I'm sure the book is very interesting. And one other thing, Mexico actually had almost an identical sighting in 2004. Sorry, it is seen again. Less than 10 years later, it same type of thing was seen okay. in Mexico. Okay. So uh, that's basically it. So what point did you go, all right, there's some stuff here. At what point? When I started watching the documentary, the some of the eyewitness accounts, some of the people, the, the commercial pilot who had 40 plus years of experience, experience as a military person, you know, he mentioned it was moving too slow to stay in the air. If it was a if it was an aircraft that we have, it it has they have to travel at a certain rate of speed in order to take off and to stay in the air because you have to have lift. You have to have enough wind speed over the wings to raise it up and keep it up in the air. So, in order to have enough lift, you have to travel at a pretty fast speed to stay in the air. True. And this was not traveling fast. That was the one, I mean, it slowly moved, and it moved over the entire city. North, north was it? Northwest to southeast? Was that what the one governor said? But that's how it moved. It moved like in a straight line over like one of the most populated areas of the state of Arizona. I, that's the one thing that got me was that it, when they knew everybody's looking. Hey, there's a comet. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> you know, let's, you know, like let's fly by. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like that's what people said. It seemed more like. It was trying to show people, we're here. Look, you know, because it had the most sight. I mean, this was like the biggest sighting, reported sighting of anything. Still, I think. I'll say what did it for me was when I watched all the documentaries and stuff, they're talking about like trying to debunk it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they could do to debunk it. There's not, I mean, they tried everything. They even tried people like 
faking it, but then you go, well, how do other people see it then? Mm-hmm. So, at that point in time, I will leave it as, that was UFO. Everybody knows it was UFO. Anyone tries to say it wasn't, I'm open for discussion. Show me. Yeah, I don't think this one, I, I think it was definitely a UFO. Um, I don't think it can be explained in any other way. So happy! I happy I converted your views on this. I did. It it was it was funny because you know I was messaging Angelina and Kelly, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this documentary sucks. It because it, it starts out really bad. Just stick with it if you watch it because the information in it is actually the information is good. It's like an informational video. Almost. Yeah, but I'm like, okay, I'm starting to think maybe there's something to this, and then like a couple seconds later, I'm like, okay, totally converted my opinion. I totally 100 percent believe this was. A UFO. I, I just you. The lights have to be attached to something to travel as uniformly as they did. I agree with you. So with that being said, Jamie, tell everybody where they can find it. Whale. Whale. <laughs> you can find us uh, where you listen to your favorite podcast. We're on most major platforms, and you can always find us at lurkpodcast.com, where all of our episodes are listed. In addition to somebody flushing the toilet, taking a dupe. In the show notes for each episode, we have links to the social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and any resource information, and also a link to our merch is located in the show notes. Merch, and merch, merch, merch. You can get yourself a nifty t-shirt. That could fit a human-sized toddler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So with all that being said, like always, keep lurking. Keep lurking.